everything you need to know about the circle of fifths in 12 minutes so you don't fall behind in music class. At the end of this episode, you will be able to fully understand the circle of fifths, what it is, how it works, the relative minor, enharmonic keys, and the logic behind the key signatures. By following the next tips, you will be easily reasoning out and memorizing the circle of fifths. Let's break it down now. What is the circle of fifths? The circle of fifths is a visual music tool that shows the relationship between the 12 notes of the Western classical music system. Its shape reminds us to a clock or a pizza cut in 12 parts. Each pot around the circle of fifths represents a note, a chord, or a major key. How does the circle of fifths work? Before we start moving around the circle, we need to understand that a fifth is the distance between five consecutive notes. There are three types of fifths depending on the number of semitones between the notes. Perfect fifth, seven semitones, Augmented fifth, eight semitones, and diminished fifth, six semitones. But why does it matter? Because in the circle of fifths, all the keys are going to be separated by perfect fifths. Or in other words, that distance of seven semitones. For instance, if we move a perfect fifth up from C, we get to G. That's a distance of seven semitones. And if we move a perfect fifth down from C, we get to F. That's again seven semitones, but counting down. All right, let's apply this to the actual circle of fifths. Hey, by the way, do not forget to smash the subscribe button. Moving clockwise, keys with sharps. Here, our anchor point is C at 12 o'clock. Moving clockwise around the circle of fifths, we need to move up in perfect fifths. Remember that a perfect fifth is an interval of seven semitones. As we move clockwise, each key gains one sharp. Making your life easier, the number of steps you take moving clockwise around the circle tells you how many sharps the key will have. Let's understand this better with an example. Our starting point was C major, and we realized there are no sharps or flats in this key. If we move one step clockwise, we get to G major, which has one sharp. Going a step farther, this is two steps away from C major, we get to D major, which will have two sharps. At this point, we can guess that A major will have three sharps, E major will have four sharps, B major will have five, and F sharp major six sharps. Moving anti-clockwise, keys with flats. Moving anti-clockwise around the circle of fifths, we need to count down in perfect fifths. As we move in this direction, each key gains one flat. In other words, the number of steps you take moving anti-clockwise around the circle tells you how many flats the key will have. Here comes an example. Our starting point is still C. If we move one step anti-clockwise, we get to F major, which has one flat. Going a step farther, this is two steps away from C, we get to B flat major, which will have two flats. If we carry on, E flat major will have three flats, A flat major will have four flats, D flat major five, and G flat major six flats. But careful with this common mistake. For some reason, many students confuse the key of B flat major with B major or the key of E flat major with E major, we have to specify the word flat in within the title of keys with flats. What's the order of the sharps? It all seems easy so far. You now know how to figure out the number of sharps and flats of any major key. But which are those sharps or flats exactly? And most importantly, in which order do they go? Well, the good news is that sharps also follow the circle of fifths clockwise, and they add up. You just need to remember that the first sharp is F. Then, to get more sharps, you need to move clockwise from F. So for the second sharp, we move clockwise along the circle and get C. For a third sharp, move one step farther to G, and so on. So we notice that new sharps are added in the order F, C, G, D, A, E, B. 
If you want to memorize anything of the circle of fifths, this sequence is definitely it. You can use a mnemonic device to remember the order of the sharps, like Father Christmas gave Dad an electric blanket. Let's see an example with real keys and key signatures. When we were in G major, we said we have one sharp. Now we know it's F sharp, because F is the first sharp. If we were in D major, and we said to have two sharps, we keep F as the first sharp, and add up the necks in the circle C sharp. What's the order of the flats? Flats will follow the circle anticlockwise and will also add up. The first flat will be B flat. Then, to get more flats, you need to move anticlockwise from B flat. So for the second flat, we move anticlockwise along the circle and get E flat. For the third flat, move one step farther to A flat, and so on. So, to get the order of the flats, all we have to do is reverse the order of the sharps. B, E, A, D, G, C, and F. You can recall the order of the flats by saying big elephants always drive go cars fast. Let's put this into practice. When we were in F major, we said we had one flat. Now we know the first flat is always B flat. If we were in B flat major and we said to have two flats, we keep B as the first flat and add up the next in the circle E flat. As we see, the addition of sharps and flats follows a pattern when going around the circle of fifths step by step. The direction you are heading in tells you whether you are adding sharps or flats. Remember, no key signature has both sharps and flats. Every major key has a relative minor key. This means that both keys share the same key signature. To find the relative minor of a major key, all you have to do is count a minor third, three semitones, down from the major key. If you need to find the relative major of a minor key, just reverse the process and count a minor third up from the minor key. Let's have a look at these examples. C major has no sharps or flats. Count down three semitones and find its relative minor, A minor. Same with G major. Count down three semitones and get E minor as the relative. If we continue with this process, we get an inner circle with all the minor keys. How to find the major key of a key signature? Now comes probably the most fun and most helpful side of the circle of fifths, and that's figuring out the major key of a given key signature. Fear not, we will give you a couple of tricks to make this really easy, and eventually you will even find that you will begin to memorize them, and no longer need the shortcuts. Hey, by the way, don't forget to smash the subscribe button. The trick to find the major key of a key signature with sharps is to look at the last sharp and raise it a semitone. So if we have three sharps, F, C and G, we take the G, raise it a semitone and we get that our major key is A major. Let's suppose we now have five sharps on the key signature. These are F, C, G, D and A. So again we would look at the last sharp, A sharp raise it a semitone and get B as our major key. But careful, this trick only works for key signatures with sharps. The shortcut to find the major key of a key signature with flats implies looking at the penultimate flat. That's going to give us the name of the major key we are in. For instance, when we have four flats on a key signature, B, E, A and D, we look at the penultimate and get the key A flat. There is just one exception to this. In F major, we only have one flat in the key signature, so there is no penultimate flat to look at. To find out which key we are in, you can simply memorize the first flat is B flat, or jump to the other end of the flat sequence to find it. How to find the minor key of a key signature? Now we know that every key signature can be shared by a major key and its relative minor. Do you really want the easiest way to find the minor key of a key signature? Use the trick we just learned and get the relative major first. Once you have it, 
just count down three semitones and you will get the minor key of that key signature. For instance, we had three sharps in A major. Remember, lower A three semitones and you get F sharp. So, if we have three sharps in the key signature, we may be in A major or F sharp minor. The same applies for keys with flats. In F major, we have one flat. Now, let's lower that F three semitones and you get to the relative minor, D. So with one flat on the key signature, we may be in F major or D minor. Henharmonic keys. At this stage, it's time to talk about the button of the circle of fifths. We covered key signatures up to five sharps and flats. Let's resume there. Moving five spots clockwise from C gave us B major having five sharps. Jumping five spots anti-clockwise from C took us to D flat major with five flats. Now, if we keep moving on opposite directions, we would meet at the bottom of the circle. Moving a perfect fifth, seven semitones up from B would take us to F sharp major, while moving a perfect fifth down from D flat would take us to G flat major. Now, why are we stuck in the same place with two different names? Is the circle of fifths not working? Absolutely not. F sharp major and G flat major are what we call henharmonic keys. They are two keys that sound exactly the same but are written differently. Look at them as equivalent names for those scales. Think that once we get to seven sharps, where every note is sharpened, it actually becomes easier to think of the scale in flats. That way it will be easier to sight read because there will be fewer accidentals. Let's see an example. C sharp major and D flat major are henharmonic keys. They will be identical in sound, but the notes will be called and written differently in each case. In the C sharp major scale, every degree is sharpened, so we have seven sharps. But rewriting this in the key of D flat major where only five flats are needed, would make this easier to sight read. If you have enjoyed learning music theory with us, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell. Or if you want to go a bit farther, have a look to our online courses at hampsteadpianoacademy.com. See you all there.